Hey guys, welcome to episode 7 of my Discord.js bot development series. This episode, we're going to build a simple count game command. And how it's going to function is every time someone... I'll kind of like type it out in chat. So how it's going to do is someone will start the game by doing count 1. And to play the game, all you have to do is just do count 2, count 3, whatsoever. So if the game is at 17 counts, then you'll just do 18 and that'll continue to count. However, let's say if the game is at 22, but someone enters 15, that will end the game. So you have to kind of, you know, keep an eye, make sure that you know how, where the game is at in regards to count. So we're going to do this using JavaScript sets. And I actually have that pulled up right now on the MDN docs. So a set object lets you store unique values of any type, whether primitive values such as strings, integers, and such, or object references, such as, um, let's say you have an object that has uh, the user's, someone's name, age, and favorite color. You can store the favorite color of all of the object's references in the set. So you can read through the different properties and methods of a set, but specifically we're going to be using set add and set clear. So set add allows you to add new elements into a set. And this is how we're going to be adding the user ID. And also we're going to be using the size. Clear is what's going to happen if someone enters the wrong number, it's going to clear the set and reset the game. And then if we do set the size, this will get the size. So we'll take the size every time someone does count like 15, 16, it will take the size of the set and then plus one, it'll return that value so you can see where the current game is at and what value you have to enter. So we're gonna go ahead, create the count command and start building this. So let's do count.js. And first we're gonna create the new set and I'm gonna call this set count game. And we just do new set. And this creates the new set. And then we're gonna go through the rest of the way and build the command. Also, I'm gonna take, add a few more things for usage so people can see how to like add, play the game. So first let me get the prefix and you'll see why I'm doing this. And so I have the prefix. Then let's build the command. Actually, you know, I think for each episode, I'm going to have like the basics set up so I can just get through it faster. So I'm not doing this every single episode. I think that will help save some time. So that's what we have here. So first and foremost, I'm going to go ahead and get the name of the command. And to do that, we're going to access the name from the mmap. So you know if you remember seeing that back in creating the command handler, we created mmap to store the information for the command, client.commands. So just like from the previous command handler episode, we're just gonna create a new variable called cmd name. And then we're gonna do client.commands.get count. This will get the object in the collection. And then if you want to get the specific property, we can do help that name. And this will get the command name. Next, we're going to need a number. And that's going to be an argument. And if you remember how I said arguments in the previous episodes, you'll know how this goes. So all we're going to need is just one argument. And that's just going to be a number. So we're going to call this variable num. And it's going to equal to args zero. And remember the args are an element. Each each word in the message content is a, a element in the array. But there's one more thing we're gonna have to do to make sure everything else works properly. And we're gonna have to parse this argument. And we're gonna do parse int. And this is to make sure that it's an actual number. The string is converted to an actual number since arg zero is a string. That's why we're parsing it. Then if someone doesn't provide the argument, then we're going to return 
and we're gonna let them know that the proper usage. We're using template literals here, so we're not using string concatenation. Um, if you want to put code elements in the template literal, all you have to do is you do the backtick, backslash, and backtick. You'll put in the variable, in this case, so we have prefix plus CMD name. And then you'll do that again. And you have to put one more backtick here, but here we just have the number. So if you go ahead, start up the bot, and we just do count. It's gonna say that we have to provide this usage with the num. So that's starting out there. Next, we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna add in three things. First, if the game doesn't exist, add user to the set and send message a new game started. So that's the first part. Next part is if user enters incorrect number in the game, clear the set. Then, I thought, uh, right. Then if either of those don't exist, if everything else is fine, add user to the set. So that's how this is going to function. So this will just be a string of FL statements, else if specifically. So what we're going to go ahead is I'm going to go ahead and build the if statements. So first off is we're going to get, we're going to use count game dot size to get the size. So if count game dot size equals zero, we'll do something. It will add user to the set and send a message at the game. Sorry. All right, I need to do this. If a game is ongoing, add user to the set. Then we'll do else if. In this, we'll, so we're gonna take the number and if the number does not equal the size of the set plus one, because it's increasing. So if someone before you enters 14, you have to enter 15. We'll go ahead and clear the set. Else, if uh, there's already an ongoing game, we're just going to go ahead and add the user to the set. So that's how everything is being set up here. So first, we're going to go ahead and write the code for where the set where the game doesn't exist. And the first thing we're going to check for is we're going to make sure that the number that they enter is one, because we start from one, two, and so on and so forth. So if num does not equal zero. I'll do a strict, a strict uh, quality here. Then we're going to return the game must start at one. And that lets them know that the game must start at one. Otherwise, we'll first add them to the set. So to add someone to a set, you'll get the set and you do add. And we're just gonna add it by their ID. And then we're gonna return. As you know, in if else statement, you have to return to kind of like end this string of if else statements. Otherwise, if you don't return it, it'll keep going through the code. So that's why we stop it at return, similar to here where if they don't provide a number, it stops the code and it tells you the usage. So I'm gonna return message.channel.send and we're gonna just do message.off message.member.user a tag 
And here we're just going to send a message that lets others know that you started the game, others can play. And we'll say current count is at count game that size. Also, I'm going to make this async. So we're going to do a wait. So we just make sure that it's actually getting the updated size once it's been, once you have been added to the set. And then we have that. Now, next, if the number, so say if the count game is 15, you're expected to enter 16, but you enter 12, well, it's just gonna clear the game. So here, when you get the set, count game, I'm just gonna do a clear, and make sure you put parentheses around this, as is a method and move this extra equal sign. And again, we will return this. And I'm just going to put in the frowning emoji. Let me just say message that member a user that tag has ended the game by entering. Let me just get the num. And that will end the game. Otherwise, we're just gonna add them to the game and uh, the ongoing game. If there is an ongoing game, we'll just do count game that add message not author ID. Then return I'm just gonna say And make this async too. Game is now at count game dot size. And that's it. So I have an alt, my alt account here. Um, So we're going to go ahead on my main account and we're going to start a game. So we're going to do count one. The game must start at one. Oh, right. This has to be one. Right. So we're going to do count one and I'm having issues here apparently. Right. Okay. I had an exclamation in front of here when I shouldn't have. So hopefully everything is okay now. Okay, now I started the game. So I'm gonna go ahead and make sure so since it's at one, I have to do two to continue the game. But if I enter five, it's gonna end the game. And if I go ahead in here and do count one, it will start a new game. Just like that. So that's how to build a simple count game. You know, simple games like that can always spice up a Discord. Now, I'll do more stuff like this throughout the series if something just comes to mind. Or if you guys want to see me do something specific, then you can leave it down below in the comments or in my Discord, and I'll see what I can do about that. Anyways, guys, we'll end it off here. Again, I have my Discord server near Cave Development. You can come here to keep up with my bots, the future of the series, and connect with others, and just have a good time. Anyways, I hope you guys all take care, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.